Rick Mother of Mother.com with analysis for December 20th, 2018. I'm recording this before, let's say, two hours before the market open for December 20th, 2018. Take a look at where markets are projected to open. You can see the Dow is projected to open and change. S&P 500 slightly to the downside. The Dow is, the Nasdaq is slightly called to open higher. And we can see overnight some of the action world worldwide. You can see Japan had a big down day, down about 2.8. And we can see snapshot of commodities here. Crude oil is trading about 3% at the current time. Let's take a look at the charts. Again, we can see a snapshot of pre-market action here. And that's where markets are trading. Crude oil again down about 3%. Let's take a look at those markets in a brief look. Just so that we can have an understanding as to why we had a continuation to the downside yesterday. Where we saw the Nasdaq drop an additional 2% yesterday. The Dow was down 1.49%. And we can see the S&P 500 was down 1.5. So one thing we can watch is now that the S&P 500 is below 30.9. We know that as long as it remains below 30.9, the market is going to have a bias to the downside. If the S&P 500 is to recover, it needs to move above 30.9 so that can be used for guidance take a look at the Dow you can see the Dow is trading or closed yesterday at 31.04 it needs to hold above this on the daily if it's gonna bounce anything that moves it below 30.9 is gonna continue pushing things to the downside and the Nasdaq we could continue watching the Nasdaq Right now trading at 32.69. The key is whether or not it can hold above or below 30.9. Holding above this would be good. Short term support. Crack below 30.9 would continue the recent sell off. Of primary importance in the here and now is the S&P 500. We know that the more it continues dropping below 50 on its weekly RSI. That suggests an expanded move to the downside, which is what we are getting. And generally suggests that we are going to close at the lows of the month. So keep that in mind. Generally what that means is, as long as you're dropping below 50, you tend to close towards the lows of the month, if that is the case. So the recent movement lower is consistent with that. Understanding, take a look at the NASDAQ, which is also dropping below 30.9. The more it stays below 30. Yeah, 50. The more it stays below 50, the more we can see that this is going to be confirmed at the end of the month with the market closing towards the lows of this month. If the market is to recover, and there's nothing stopping the market from recovering, but if the market is to recover, it needs to move the monthly RSI back above 50. That's the NASDAQ. Take a look at the Dow. We can continue watching the Dow to see whether it joins the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 by dropping below 50 right now, trading at 51.26. What the bulls want to see is the market defending 50. And the bears would like to see the Dow also crack below 50, confirming that all markets, major markets in the U.S. are going to be confirming this big down month all the way to the end of the month. Let's not underestimate the implications of what the S&P 500 monthly is doing. At the present time, we can see that the S&P 500 is moving its monthly RSI to 34 month lows. And what this means is this now meets the minimum requirements for the ultimate Moade sell signal. We can also see that 
one of the MACDs is at three year lows, if not just about to crack to three year lows. So definitely S&P 500 right now meets the minimum requirements for the ultimate more the sell signal, which as long as that's the case, this is very bearish. It would not surprise that the market continues month to month, not necessarily day to day or week to week, but as long as this is the case, we should expect month to month the market to continue having a bias to the downside. Keep in mind, as long as, as far as the VIX is concerned, we have the exact opposite setup where the VIX is showing an ultimate more breakout on the monthly. We've been talking about the fact that as long as the VIX is holding above 21.23, which is this monthly closing high from October, as long as that's the case, then this market is definitely under tremendous downside pressure. We see that the VIX is moving its RSI to three-year highs, something that we've been discussing for a couple of weeks. So that's a three-year move, giving the VIX the opportunity of seeing higher prices, pushing markets lower. We can see for sure the MACDs, or at least one of the MACDs is trading definitely at three-year highs, if not both MACDs. So definitely the VIX meets the minimum requirements for the ultimate more the breakout, which means upside possibility for the VIX continues, downside pressure for the market continues. On the weekly for the VIX, we can also watch the recent weekly closing high for an immediate guide. And as long as the VIX can defend and hold above 24.16, which is this weekly closing high from the week of October, then we expect the market to continue having a bias to the downside. That is as long as the VIX can continue moving above 24.16. Should the VIX fail to hold 24.16, then that, that would be the early sign that the market is starting to regain its strength and could actually recover. So the VIX holding above 24.16 is bearish for the market. The VIX cracking back below 24.16, in other words, a failed breakout for the VIX would be generally a positive sign for the market if it fails.